All right, we are live. This is so bright. Let me uh, let me dim the lights a little bit. Okay, that is better. Wow, it's been a while since I've done a live stream. Um, live streams, they're interesting. You just, you hop on the internet and you talk about stuff and you hope that some people will show up. So, um, I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody out there who's interested in learning more about a interesting camera that I just got through the mail. Am I on the, even on the right camera? I think it's using, oh, God damn it. It's using the... <laughs> It's not using the right camera. I'm such not a good live stream. I don't even know if I can change it anymore. Um, I guess not. So sorry about that. Uh, channel level setting. <laughs> great success. Great success. I'm actually live streaming on the webcam when I wanted to use the fancy new <laughs> camera that i have the zve one i don't even know if this thing is actually is streaming Let, let's go on youtube and see before we talk about the camera oh there is somebody who joined so nice to know if you are in there and you can hear me give me a thumbs up or a little you know, just a little oh yeah i guess it is working but again, I'm not on the right camera, which is not ideal. I wanted to use the ZV-E1 new fancy camera I have, and I'm not. I'm using the uh, the um, webcam that's built into the computer. Uh, let me see here. Just trying to find where I can change the camera. And then we'll get this show started. But... Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like I can change the camera after the fact. Oh, thumbs up. Okay, so that means that you guys can hear me. Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to be live streaming with the webcam and not the fancy camera that's hooked up to my computer. I really wanted, I really wanted to use it. How if somebody in the in the chat uh, knows how to change the camera once we're live in YouTube Studio? I'm not using any fancy. OBS or anything like that, uh, let me know because, um, yeah, man, this is <laughs> using a very simple setup when I, again, wanted to use the ZVE one. So enough of me rambling about technical difficulties. Um, yeah, I'm still looking for that, how to change it, but, uh, I guess this is not working. Okay, so uh, GFX 102, or as they like to call it, the second. This is an interesting one because the GFX 100, the original one, was so, so big. And it was very heavy. It had like a battery pack attached to it. And I really, really like what they've done with this new 100 megapixel or 102, I would say, more precisely, megapixel Fujifilm camera. Um, I, I got it a couple of days ago with the 110, and this is a massive lens. I'll remove the lens cap, but uh, the 110 millimeters, which gives you approximately a 60-ish um, millimeter type of uh, field of view in this lens. But I think the, the star of the show here is this beautiful 102 megapixel sensor look at the size of that they say more than full frame uh, in their tagline and of course it is bigger than full frame but more than that this is just a, a little live stream to talk about my initial thoughts on the camera i again haven't been shooting uh, a lot with it uh, i'm planning on doing that over the next few weeks but what i like about it is the fact that it's smaller this is a, a i don't want to say medium format because some people will say like hey this is, uh, this is not a medium format camera. I don't care. At the end of the day, it's bigger than full frame in the digital world. And whatever you call medium format on film, this is the closest thing outside of the Hasselblad and so on and so forth. But uh, Fuji has been able to shrink, shrink down the size of it. Um, Daniel Gamash says this sensor is huge. Yeah, man, look at this. This is, this is a freaking huge sensor. But it also runs uh, this one on the uh, X processor 5. So it's very, very 
fast for again a such a huge camera that processes uh, huge files uh, once uh, at the same time. Uh, they they are uh, targeting it uh, into like even sports photographer. I I don't know that you want to shoot sports with this camera. This is not the camera for it. I see this being a product photography uh, camera or a fashion. Uh, or in studio type of camera. I mean, of course, you can shoot whatever you want with whatever camera you, camera you want. If you want to shoot a a sport event with a with a Leica M10, do it. Be my guest. Uh, but here, <clears throat> a couple of things. So the first one is that it uses the CF Express um, cards. So this is a a card that's super fast that enables you to uh, to high data rates um, in terms of photo and also video. And it also sports an SD uh, card, so you've got both. So you've got your CF Express, which I would recommend using as your first card. And then you do a backup, redundant, or you can extend the size of your card by doing sequential uh, within this uh, setup of backup data on the camera. That's the first thing. Second thing is, of course, the tilt screen. So this is a very sturdy tilt screen. It reminds me of the Leica types of uh, tilt screen it's way uh, better than the ones on the xt5 and the xt4 and well not xt4 xt3 xt2 uh, i find that these type of screens again because the bigger body allows it um, it enables them to do a stronger type of tilt up screen so it tilts up this way so you can actually do almost a 90 degree and on the other side when you do up very very useful if you're shooting up like that you can still see your shot with the tilt down screen so that's how how much it goes down as the screen so danielle is asking will the af be good enough for high demanding fashion suits shoes again they're targeting it uh, as the a new era in autofocus let me actually share my screen just to, to show you what i'm looking at um they're, they're a marketing spiel right so high speed performance new era in autofocus they even show like a guy who plays basketball as uh, the kind of the marketing aspect of it. But what it has that some other uh, GFX camera don't is the, doesn't have is the subject detect autofocus that we find in X-T uh, cameras. And in X, uh, I don't know if the X-Pro3 has it. Uh, maybe it does. But uh, this one with the X-Processor 5, it enables them to use the subject AF. So this is your the eye face and then animals and so on and so forth so it is i've tried it on my dog i've tried it on my uh, girlfriend i've tried it on a, a couple people and uh it seems to be working very well so I'm, I'm 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 making what i'm seeing from a medium format camera again not sure if we can call it medium format but this uh, this type of sensor uh usually the first iteration the x100 um, the first ver version and the X uh, G GFX, sorry, the GFX 100 and GFX 50 R uh, were a bit slower on the autofocus side. So, for demanding fashion shoots, I'm I'm not sure. I would uh, I would uh, I have to try it before recommending anything. So maybe I'll try it. Maybe I'll try it in a, an environment where there's like movement, and then you need to to, to do some bursts. Speaking of bursts, uh, you can do eight frames per second. Which is again interesting if you're doing fast, demanding type of jobs. Um, body bigger than the new SL3. Oh, it's actually it's actually uh, slightly bigger than the SL3. Uh, the SL3 is more in the lines of a smaller DSLR, like we used to 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 you know to run. So like the Canons or uh, Lumix and so on. Uh, so this one is a bit bigger, a bit heavier, but it's. Um, it's this lens, you know, that makes it so heavy. Like just the body itself, it's not that heavy, to be honest. This is what I pr really appreciate from this type of body is that this is such a huge sensor. It's stabilized also in there, and they've managed to keep it as a, at a as a reasonable weight. But here's the thing: you put one of those 110 millimeters on it, and I have another one here. It's a zoom. Um, lens that's actually even bigger than that. The lenses are, are, are what makes it uh, so heavy as a system. But again, this is the sensor you've got to cover, and this is the you know the lens that you need to be able to cover that type of sensor. But uh, for the SL3, I've, I've held it in my hands, and the SL2 too. Uh, this is a uh, 
this is a bigger camera, but not that much. To be honest, the SL system is pretty big when you think about it versus uh, similar full frame options. It's gigantic, uh, Ray said. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty good, but I invite you to go see if you have a chance in any camera store the X100. And uh, sorry, not the X100. If you can find an X100, six or five, good. lucky you. Uh, the GFX100, the original one with the battery pack, it was like double the size of that. The other thing I really, really like, and again, this is where I would have loved to have my fancy ZV-E1, but uh, it's hooked up, but it's not the, the one that I'm using right now. It's the webcam. Anyways, the finish on it is what I really, really appreciate. So Fuji really went above and beyond in terms of the feel of that finish on the camera. Uh, it feels way more premium than any other camera that Fujifilm, um, or any other camera for that matter, maybe Leica, uh, because we're talking about the SL3, has the same type of feeling. But this one, I can tell you, this is... Uh, the best finish I've seen on a Fuji camera. And I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's like it's an interesting, like textured type of rubberized, but not, it doesn't feel like rubber. Anyways, you, you would have to, uh, to hold it to feel it because uh, it's a very interesting finish that they went for. Really, really like that. Uh, okay, so let's go see in the chat what do we have here. Uh, okay. The sensor, yes, the sensor is, uh, well, maybe not as big as the phase one, um, but it's the biggest, most affordable um, option out there when it comes to larger than full frame. I think the, let's see how much a, a phase one, let's go, let's go online and see how much is a phase one. Uh, 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 phase one, there you go. Hasselblad. Let's see. So the new one, the X, X2DC, uh, beautiful camera too. If I can hit, if I can get my hands on, on it, uh, I will. Uh, let's see here. This is the X2D 100C, which is the kind of the latest model. So it's also 100 megapixel medium format, BSIC must sensor, IBIS, just like the uh, Fujifilm uh, phase detection autofocus. This is interesting. This is something that uh, they've uh, went for and they added the, in a built in one terabyte uh, SSD. You don't get that in the Fuji. Uh, Fuji puts the onus on you to put some cards in there. Let's see how much it costs. So this is an eight. So this is US dollars. This is a eight grand, um, eight thousand two hundred. And let's see how much the Fuji goes for. I don't even think that Fuji. This is the thing with Fuji. The marketing at Fuji is not necessarily the best because right now there's not even a buy now button. You really have to go through the resellers. So let's go see. Let's go see here and GFX. And I'm going to say X100 uh, <laughs> a lot because uh, this is, this is, this is uh, very close in naming, but um, you get what I'm saying. So here's the price for the GFX102 or the second, as some even Fujifilm, I think, said the, the second. Okay, so we've got 7,500. So there's a, yeah. So 7.5 versus 8.2. It's almost like a thousand bucks, you know, more for the Hasselblad. But again, this those are two very capable camera. I think the Hasselblad is a completely different shooting experience. Um, whereas the Fujifilm is a bit more in line with the XT sh shooting experience with your dials on top. You've got some customizable um, modes. You've got C1 to C6, so a bit like the XH2S that uh, I have somewhere. Somehow, it's not here. Um, you've got six modes, so you can pre-program it with uh, your favorite film simulations, or if you want a video mode, and so on and so forth. 
that is uh, happening right here on the custom dials that you see on top of the camera. They also have a movie and stills dedicated uh, button, which is very useful because it keeps your settings uh, in the memory. So you don't have to reprogram everything. So you go from stills, so your ISO, your shutter speed, your uh, all the settings actually will be retained. And then you go to movie, and then it's your movie setting. So if you're in 24p with uh, the shutter angle type of triangle with the um, shutter speed and the uh, frames per second, then you're ready to go. Hassle is less expensive than the Leica M11P. <laughs> yes, um, different experience. You gotta. Where am I pointing? I've got a Leica M10R here, and um, I don't recommend buying new, brand new Leica cameras, and you pay the tax on top of that. So I recommend buying used gear um, for all cameras, uh, for that matter, but uh, especially for, for Leica gear. Fuji, also, you, you start to find some GFX 102s or 2 uh, online for less than they were are new. And in pretty good condition so um, so i would recommend also exploring that option if you're interested in this type of camera but let's continue exploring the camera i do like uh the button placement because you can almost operate the whole camera with one hand and with your thumb right here you've got your joystick not sure i'm a, the biggest fan of that joystick sometimes it feels a bit weird and and i actually prefer the d-pad but i'm also a big fan of simplicity, so I don't miss the D-pad, and I use the joystick, but I was a fan of the D-pad just to, for operational reason, like to go faster to what I wanted. But um, yeah, I guess we're now used to these little joystick that uh, both the Fuji XT line and the X and the GFX has now, and other cameras in their lineup. So you've got your uh, auto exposure lock button, and all these buttons can be reassigned. But for now, uh, auto exposure lock, you've got your menu button, you've got your display back, and you've got your uh, assignable button uh, right on top of that. And also the back button focus is really in, uh, well positioned in, in a very natural position. So your, your back button focus is right here on the thumb. And your shutter is right here, of course, under your index. And Speaking of the place where your index is, you've got three assignable buttons. This is also something I really like about this camera is that all the assignable buttons are right here at your fingertip and you can decide that you know it's exposure comp or it's ISO or it's exposure lock or whatever you want. You can assign it to these buttons that are on top here. The drive button's right here on the left of the viewfinder. So is the trash button right here. Uh, and of course, this is a, a you can you can also find uh, these type of uh, viewfinders that are like this. So you you shoot it a bit more like from uh, the hip, and um, you look down. So this is another option. Uh, what Fuji sent me is this one with the regular viewfinder like that. It's a very um, high res sensor. I really like it. It's very bright in there. I mean, if for a, a camera of that price you would expect it to be that a level of of quality sorry and uh they did deliver so this is basically the um, 120 fps display within the viewfinder so this is a no blackout like uh, let me just test it right now just to make sure of what i'm saying oh yeah that's the other thing this lens needs a, a bit of distance to be able to focus Yeah, it is a very, very small blackout, very, very uh, little blackout. Let's do it. Let's do it like that. Make a straight line. See? So it's a... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, these glasses are just like stupid uh, old guy um, that can't see anything from near uh, type of glasses that you find at like Costco. So <laughs> this works well. I don't know for like regular glasses, to be honest, Ray. Um, I would um, would have to ask my girlfriend who does wear glasses, like real glasses. Um, so I don't know, but for for near side problems, I'm, I'm French, right? So sometimes I don't have the the proper stuff in English. But for for these type of glasses, uh, where when you can see from from close distance, because uh, I'm old. Uh, yeah, it does work very well in this EVF. 
Very cool camera. It's not for me. I'll stick with my M10R and the SL2. Nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, man, absolutely. M10R right there. Uh, probably one of my favorite cameras of all time. And uh, I've got the, uh, for, on my side, I've got the M6. Also, this is same type of experience, but analog, of course. And the Q2 that completes the whole trio. So I, for me, that's uh, the ultimate trio. But I, I, I do like uh, medium format on digital uh, for some reason uh, fujifilm was able to also bring all that color science to this camera i mean you don't necessarily buy a gfx to shoot jpegs or hef h-e-i-f which this camera also shoots um, but maybe you do you know like the, the the world has evolved and it's no longer necessary to shoot raw again unless you want the the, the best dynamic range and all these great things um they do say that it's 5.3 uh frames per second blackout free burst operation so this is uh just a bit of information that i uh i think i misled you when i said that there is a blackout so i don't know why i saw a blackout on mine but uh supposedly you oh when setting to electronic shutter there you go there's always a catch there's always a catch so it's when you're on the electronic shutter, which I would never shoot, but maybe again, maybe this is an old school mindset of mine where anytime you do an electronic shutter, uh, you get those like lines that are, if you if there's a bit of movement that are weird. Um, so, but yeah, it's technically possible to have zero blackout, 5.3 frames plus per second burst operation on this camera. Um, they've got the zone custom setting, the, the AFC custom setting. Uh, they've got 425 points of focus, which is interesting uh, for a camera like that because it's such a large sensor that, um, you know, it's for me, it's hard to process that they can do autofocus that fast, but apparently they've been able to use the processor speed uh, in order to uh, to do it. But for me, the what really brings it home is the image quality. This camera even goes to ISO 80. So if you want to and have that, you know, blurry background in daylight, uh, 80 will help. Uh, that's definitely a, a, a fact. Definitely a fact. Huh. I sound like a, I don't know, a politician or something. I like the idea of medium format. Uh, Ray says, I like the idea of medium format, but not sure if it is what I, sh uh, what I shoot. Uh, here to learn more about medium format options. Yeah, so uh, this is your best uh, option when it comes to affordable, high quality uh, type of offer in the market, the GFX 102. Again, it retails for $7,500, uh, whereas an example, a Hasselblad X2D 100C is uh, 8,200. So again, this is a very affordable option. Well, very affordable. If, if you are into medium format, that's the price you need to pay, but then you need to buy the lenses, which are, not cheap either, but again, they're cheaper than something like uh, the options uh, for the Asseblad. I came in after you started. What type of photographer? What type of photographer is Fuji targeting? Yeah, so this is this is an interesting one because when they introduced the camera, they were um, targeting it to to basically anyone that wants more than full frame, whatever that means. Not sure that I. Uh, I agree with uh, with that statement, but I think they're trying to democratize the access to medium format because they are talking about how now it shoots fast out of focus and you can even do sports. I mean, again, if you go on their website, uh, I think you came in after, so I'm going to show you what I was looking at. But uh, let's see here. Um, here. So you look at what or how they're positioning it. Uh, yes, of course, your, your good old landscape and so on. The first thing you see is a guy that is jumping at a at a basketball uh, hoop. And uh, there you go. Because they wanted to showcase the great autofocus, because they weren't known for the autofocus with the previous. But if you look here, um, it's all about like sports type of shoots and uh, putting into context their subject detect autofocus which is also something that they've improved with the x processor 5 let me just turn down the zv1 since i'm not using it i, I, I tried but um, i failed i'm now on the webcam hey what do you want sometimes you go with the flow so yeah so they're, they're targeting this camera at a larger uh, 
total addressable market than they were. Like, look at this. This is also uh, a sport type of shot, and it's also weather sealed, as you can imagine. Again, for that price, you would expect this camera to be weather sealed, and it is. It's not waterproof, but it will resist, you know, some drops and some water and some rain. Um, again, another aspect of the high performance, high speed that they're targeting. Um, so again, to, to answer your, your question, who are they targeting it to? It's, it's anyone that wants more than full frame, but still want to retain some uh, qualities of full frame, which is speed and accuracy and so on and so forth. Um, of course, I would say that this is a more camera for the product photographers out there. Fashion, I think, is another interesting one. Landscape, of course, this is capable of so much detail with this 102 megapixel um, type of, uh, of sensor. And also the best image quality on the market. This is something that uh, if you do advertising and you know you want to print very, very big files, uh, this is a camera you should definitely consider. I also think that this is a camera that works well in the studio uh, environment because uh, you can uh, really take advantage of that image quality and then in post uh, play with the file more than if it was on an APS-C sensor. I mean, just, just, just for comparison, this is one of my first Fuji cameras. This is the X, X70, yeah, getting lost with all those names. Look at this difference in size. This, this is APS-C, and this is medium or large format, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, interesting. It, there, there, there's a camera for every shooting style and situation. So Danielle says, in my younger days, I would shoot weddings with my Hasselblad. There you go. This is another use of the very good use of medium format cameras. Not sure I would need this camera to shoot weddings today. Studio work for sure. Landscape photos also. Absolutely. I think this is where it shines. And after trying to convince us that this is a sports camera, you know, in the marketing here, um, you can see that uh, they go back to the landscape very rapidly because... Where that? Yeah, there you go. Because this is where this camera shines. Usually, I'm not a big fan of the photos that they 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 put on those type of websites um, for promo reasons. I mean, it's not a bad shot, but uh, yeah. The other thing you need to consider is that those lens um, are there's a crop factor, but on the other side. So usually with the APS-C, let's say you have a 23 millimeter, it's going to be the equivalent of a 35 millimeter on on a full frame. Here you got to divide this number. So 110 uh, millimeters on this camera equates to like 60-ish uh, something. So it's it's closer to uh, a 50 than uh, than 100 millimeters. That's also something to keep in mind. Again, because the, the the sensor is bigger, you have to do the inverse math when you consider buying some lenses. But let's continue with some of the features that this camera offers. Um, the pixel shift multi-shot. So basically what this does is it uses the IBIS that's inside to do a bit of a, just a pixel shift here in, uh, on the right, on the left, on the top, on the bottom to do a um, four times the resolution. So that brings it to 400 megapixels. So imagine this, if you do a uh, shot of a beautiful landscape, you can get a 400 megapixel shot of your um landscape so wow this is this is becoming this is not for moving subject of course it's more stills because again it's going to move the sensor in inside so um, very uh, interesting feature i used it on the first uh, iteration of the camera and i was amazed like when i when i zoomed in of you know what 400 megapixel looks like the only drawback is that uh, you better have a storage solution that's capable of supporting it it's very heavy in terms of a file you get. Uh, so it'll make like 20 frames uh, with every red, green, blue pixel that, that has the same information. And then it's going gonna, it's gonna to do some math. Uh, anyways, to, 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 to produce a very detailed and rich type of file. So that's something that's interesting. Uh, like I said, it has the HIF, J, the equivalent of JPEG, but more compressed, but higher res or higher quality. So it's a new format that's... Um, it's out there, uh, and it also has the new film simulation that is called Reala, Reala Ace. Uh, this is something they started doing, so putting the new film simulation and the new cameras, and then if you're lucky, uh, you'll get it with the older cameras. I think we're getting it for the X-H2S uh, 
soon i think it's over the summer um so that's a good news but right now it's on the fujifilm gfx 102 and also the x106 so many models I, re I remember the days when there were like two models like the x pro and the xt but these days are gone um what else this this also shoots video yes you can shoot video with your medium format digital camera and when you say video, it's not uh, small specs. Like if you look at that, it's 4K 60p. Uh, it also shoots 8K 30p up to 30p and full HD in 120p. So it's a very capable cameras in terms of the, the codec. It does the 422 10-bit in camera recording, which is also interesting. So this gives you very uh, high flexibility in the files and the quality of the files that you're getting. It does ISO 100 uh, in movie and uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, 4K 60, like I said, 8K 30. Um, yeah, 4 to 2, 10 bits. So this is basically on par with what you get in the Sony or in a Fuji X uh, H2S when it comes to the uh, 10 bit 4 to 2 type of files that you're getting out of a camera to film videos. Um, in terms of the, the, the sensor, so I keep saying that it's medium format in brackets because this is what uh, we're looking at basically with the difference between um, the GFX sensor, how it uses, you know, 8K resolution and, and down samples it to actually it uses a portion of the sensor basically to down sample it to 8K or DCI 4K or Cine 5.8K. So this allows uh, a video shooter to have a lot of flexibility when it comes to the the format and then look at this the gf lenses that's why they're so big they need to cover the whole sensor so the sensor is 43.8 by 32.9 millimeters and i think this is where some people debate that if it's 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 not true medium format or not i don't care it just this is this is you know a a, a very big sensor um probably one of the biggest that's available today for consumers so what else do we have? We have uh, subject tracking. This is also something that uh, is new to Fujifilm as a whole, and now we're getting it to the Fuji X H2S again this summer, hopefully sooner, but um, you'll be able to touch and track, which was not the case on any Fuji cameras, and they were lacking on that department. So it's funny that they introduced it with a GFX camera, and it's not even on their flagship video centric camera like the xh2s yet but that's just my gripe uh, with how they release stuff uh, but yeah you'll be able to track an object just like a sony camera does will it do it as as good as the sony camera probably not but uh, just the fact that you can track a subject with a fujifilm camera is a welcome addition to how autofocus works on on these cameras uh, this, the rolling shutter is really uh, well controlled. That's also something that I've, in my testing, I've been able to, uh, and this is not uh, a small task because the size of the sensor, the way it reads the image or what it captures, very interesting that they've been able to reduce the rolling shutter to a minimum. Um, so it's basically APS-C level in terms of rolling shutter. So that's very impressive. From them and you get f log 2 also in video so this is a format that's becoming more and more adopted and popular I'm just going to take a sip here because when you shoot in log you got it's the equivalent of shooting raw for photos you have more flexibility in post you get a flatter file that you can then uh, work with and you get higher dynamic range um just looking at other things that they've introduced with this camera. So it's compatible with the frame.io camera to cloud. So if you work, we were speaking of who is who's this camera for. If you work in an environment where there's people working with you, a team of people working with you, waiting for those files, you can actually upload directly to the cloud uh, the shots that you're taking, uh, maybe the video even. I have to, I have to yep, yeah, it, it, it does video and uh, deliver raw or JPEG images and sends H.264 video proxies or upload 4K ProRes video securely to any project uh, for immediate review. So you can use cloud or frame.io as the platform to upload directly your files to the cloud so a team can review, start working on the files 
or even start assembling or editing a video, which is very interesting. It's compatible with the uh, the cooling fan that they've introduced um, with the XT system, X, or the XH system, should I say. Uh, you've got the two places here to, where you can screw the fan. So this will help with the overheating. So it won't overheat if you put the fan on. Again, that's what they're claiming. I haven't tested it, but uh, I'm not sure I'll be able to push this thing to the limit. I'm not planning on recording an interview video uh, with this type of camera. It is also possible to record to an external SSD. This is massive because if you look at the ports here, what you've got is right here. You've got, uh, this is a connection for the cloud thing that I was referring to, so directly with an ethernet cable uh, that you can thetter, um, that's one. Then you've got your full HDMI, so that's very interesting if you want to monitor what you're shooting, and you've got your USB-C. But USB-C is not just for charging or for transferring data to your computer after the fact. It's also for recording directly to an SSD. So this is massive when you think about it. Do I have an SSD here? I mean, let's take this here. So this is my drive. Um, where's my wire? There you go. Here. So what I can do is I can plug it in directly in the camera right here. I can plug my SSD right here. And now all of a sudden I have two terabytes of data um, storage available with this camera. So when you shoot high res photos or high res videos, it can fill the card up pretty rapidly. So having the ability to hook a SSD drive to the camera becomes very interesting option. Especially if you shoot like 4k or 8k 30, I can imagine the, the video size, uh, file size. So having this SSD, um, external drive hooked to it might become clutch for those type of uh, initiatives. Uh, you've got um, a couple of things. The waveform, this is new, and this is something I wish we had on the X-H2S. We don't, so uh, please, Fuji, this is, I know this is your flagship medium format camera, but please bring it to the X-H2S. This is a camera that's supposed to be video focused, so we know you can do it because you did it on the uh, X-H or the GFX. So please bring it to the uh, XH2S. Um, and they've got a, an array of, of video. Of, oh, William. Hey, William. I hope uh, you're having a good time in Montreal, too. Uh, he's also from Montreal, uh, uh, a fellow photographer on the West Island. I'm in the Southwest. Anyways, whatever. So uh, so F-Log2 Virtuoscope. Yeah, waveform. Waveform is very interesting because you can see already with... Uh, your exposure, what it's going to look like in the end, and you can adjust for skin tones and so on. So very interesting on that front. Uh, it has the uh, image stabilization boost mode. So if you want to shoot, you know, something that is gimbal-like or not gimbal-like, but tripod-like, but you just want to lock it like that, I wouldn't recommend using IS for like those pan shot. I would try to use a tripod for that. But if you're still and you're filming something that's front of you and you're, you're static and you just want to avoid that micro jitter and that movement the is boost mode will become very very handy uh, it has zebras uh, for video and so on and so forth so this is an eight stop uh, in body image stabilization so that's very uh, useful when you want to shoot in lower light you want to do slower shutter speed or of course in video this is uh, becoming more and more uh, the norm to have these type of uh, IBIS system within cameras. They even put it in the X106, which is a very nice addition. I think it has five um, stop of uh, image stabilization. But this one is, is eight stop. So to stabilize this freaking huge sensor, um, they had to build a system that, yes, it's in a bigger body but it's not a it's not the biggest body again this is the size of a of an old dslr i remember my nikon d700 was pretty much the same size so kudos to fuji who've been able to build in a pretty efficient um 
GFX system with that eight stop of in body stabilization. Um, what else do we have here? We've got a, again, just to, to, to talk about the EVF. Uh, this is, a, like I said, a removable EVF. You can have the one that you shoot from the hip or you look down and you can, or you can have this one. But this is a 9.4 million dot. And I remember the SL3 and SL2. It's a 9.5, I think, million dot EVF. Those are the, some of the best EVFs I've seen on the market. And when you put your eye through it, you're like, wow, okay, this, this is how EVF should be. Of course, not all camera have the same price point. And they've been able to fit it into this camera. A 9.4 million EVF, <clears throat> it's hard to go back to anything else, to be honest. So this has it, uh, 1x uh, man magnification. And um, it also offers again one of the clearest image i've seen in any evfs on on the market uh, the leather pattern is is again i talked about it in my intro i noticed that there's more people on the stream right now so just to, to go back to the texture I, I want you to understand that this is probably the best um material that i've seen on a camera uh, and I'm including Leica in there. So again, at seven grand, you 7.2 grand, you are expecting it to feel premium, to feel the quality. Um, they say it's Japanese inspired imprint that improve grip in all direction. <laughs> cool, cool, Fuji. That's great. Um, it feels nice. That's that's how I would uh, uh, describe it. And it also looks very, very good. And this camera is, this is what I love about this camera. This camera looks so clean and well-designed. You can feel the Japanese craftsmanship in there. Although it's made in China. Is it made in China? I'm sure it is. They're all made in China now. They don't make any cameras in Japan anymore. It's too expensive. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's made in China. I'm, I'm sure it is. Usually they, they put it on the on the body. I'm sure. I'm sure it is. If anyone knows... Let me know. Um, William is asking, do I have any shoots with it uh, planned? Yes, but um, you live in the same city as me, and uh, I was hoping that this weekend would be nice weather and then not so cold. Apparently, it's going to snow, which is good because I'll be able to test the weather ceiling on this camera. I have this 110 millimeters. I have a zoom uh, here at 32 to something. Uh, so both will be in my bag. So usually we go out with my girlfriend, we find a nice location, and I start shooting uh, like crazy. So that's that's my plan for it. Uh, might be doing some landscape, quote unquote, type shots too, or urban uh, type of uh, of uh, shoots. Maybe maybe some street photography. Even I mean, this is again a sixty three. Now I'm 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 debating what's the, what's the math for the crop. Sensor. So, what is one ten millimeters GFX lens in uh, full frame equivalent? Uh, so, do 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 eighty seven millimeter equivalent for that hundred and ten. Yeah, so that's a bit. Uh, that is a bit uh, tight. Uh, it's good for portrait, so I'm going to definitely use it for portrait. Um, but I, I, I might use the, uh, the other. Oh, look at this shot. So, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Ray says that it might not be very discreet for street photography. No, absolutely not. Can you, can you imagine like being like, although you can shoot from the hip, right? So for, with the tilt up, so I could be very discreet like that, you know, street photography. But no, seriously, yeah, this is where I mean, the Leica M10, or even this little guy, the X, who remembers the X70? I think this was definitely one of the best pocketable camera that Fuji made. I'm so sad they stopped producing it and they stopped the line. Maybe it'll come back. Signed the petition to bring the X70 back, or the X, let's call it the X80, best street photography camera. Uh, but yeah, I prefer rangefinder camera style. Um, for that, I'm actually seeing a, a photo right now. I'm going to share with you online that uh, and to go shoot now. Now, I mean, yes, it's going to snow, so maybe we do uh, a little shoot like that. This was shot on the X1 on the GFX 100s, which is another um, 100 megapixel camera from our friends at Fuji. 
but yeah maybe a shot like that william uh that's inspiring me to go out and and shoot with this camera i really want to test it in a lot of conditions so we'll see we'll see what we can get okay so we're approaching the 45 minutes live stream live streams go by so fast it's been so long since i've done a live stream again i apologize for the poor video quality i hooked up my my camera video camera it's all hooked up and everything and then when i hit go live for some reason it defaulted to the to the webcam that's built into the the computer yeah you know you win some you lose some so uh that new letter pattern that i talked talked about it that that screen on top i really like it to be honest this is uh, very useful. Um, I first when I saw it on the XH line, I was not sure if I liked it. This one, I actually feel that I would use it a lot. I mean, I'll I'll see in the field, but um, you can fit a lot of information in there. Uh, some people think it's a waste of space. Uh, I'm not I'm not uh, with them. Again, you can operate the camera with your thumb here because of the grip and how it um, it allows you to do all of your stuff with the thumb. But uh, yeah, really like this this top LCD that you can put in white or in black. All the information that you need is there in terms of photography and videography. Um, the customizable button, I talked about that a little bit uh, earlier on. But for, for those who just joined, this is something that I really enjoy, that you can customize the heck out of this camera. You've got a couple buttons in the back that you can reassign. You've got those three buttons that are easily accessible. So in terms of user experience, UX, very, very good. And of course, you've got your custom modes here. So from C1 to C6, so you've got six custom mode plus manual aperture priority, shutter speed, uh, shutter priority, and the P mode, which is a professional mode, right? Kind of. So, um, yeah, man, that's that's pretty much it. So if we wrap up about this camera, very impressed by the build quality that it offers. Yes, it is bigger, but I mean, look at this sensor. This is a big sensor. You got to house it somehow. And they've been able to miniaturize it. And uh, very impressive. The, the, the look and the feel. I really, really like the customizability of the camera. The tilt screen, which also, I don't think I, I showed you, but not only will it tilt up like that and down like that it will also allow you to do like on the xt series like that so when you do some like vertical portraits boom you're there you don't have to like try to get behind the camera you can actually just tilt it up like that so pretty clutch feature which again we're used to in the xt line but cool that they've added it to the gfx so it supports the CF Express card, which will give you very high data rate. Uh, this is the same thing as you get in the XH2 line. So this is cool. Plus your SD. Then you've got uh, also a grip that you can put on it. So if you want extra battery life. Oh, and by the way, for the batteries, it's the same that uh, the XH and uh, the XT5 and all, all the new, all the new uh, newer cameras use this very, very capable battery. I will report back on the battery life. Again, I haven't shot like hours and hours. I've shot a couple, you know, maybe 30 shots since uh, I got it from Fuji. Uh, but uh, I'll be reporting back. So the Ethernet port is something that, again, if you're in studio, very useful because you can upload to the cloud or tether. And that's something that people do in studios. Uh, HDMI full port if you do the video stuff. Very interesting to have the full one and not the micro one. Um, people who know know that if you do video, you don't want this micro HDMI that keeps on breaking. Uh, USB-C that allows you to do both. Yes, the transfer of data and all this great stuff, but also to hook up an SSD drive, which is also something that's very interesting. And, uh, and the back screen uh, is 2.3 million dots, uh, that tilting screen. So it's more than enough to see sharp photos in the back while you're in the field. So overall, I think it's a really interesting package. You add the better autofocus, the best for GFX. They even put some sports uh, demonstration when they launched the camera. But I think for me, this is probably the most affordable G uh, GFX, not GFX, but the most affordable 
medium format digital camera on the market. Again, if you compare it to something like the Hasselblad uh, Phase 1 and, and so on and so forth. So if you have any questions about the camera, please ask them now because I'm going to end the stream 50 minutes in. Wow, again, I, I, I'm a bit rusty on the live stream side of things, but uh, this is kind of fun. It's fun that you're here tonight enjoying uh, hopefully a little glass of something on this Friday night. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to go out and shoot. And of course, I'll do a little video. Um, once I have enough thoughts and insights to share with you guys. But you can't flip it forward to take medium format selfies. Yeah, Ray, you're right. The only way you can tilt it is tilt it is this way, this way. But unfortunately, you cannot do the infamous selfie with your medium format $8,000 or $7,000 camera. Actually, I don't know if there's a lens on this system that will allow you to be that close because uh, these seem to be uh, the minimum focusing distance of the GFX lenses uh, seems to be uh, way bigger than than that you know so yeah I, I wouldn't recommend this camera for selfies there you go that's the insight of this live stream this who is this camera for not for people who want to do selfies there you go we found it out together thanks Ray this is uh, the most insightful video you'll find on the internet about the GFX 100 <laughs> out there is there wi-fi bluetooth connectivity to a computer or an app or a phone it has bluetooth and wi-fi connectivity to connectivity to the phone with the revamp app that it's called the x app i think not to be confused with the other app from this billionaire um yeah so the x app has been revamped and it connects directly with the gfx just like any other fujifilm camera so you can transfer your files directly from the camera to your phone and then edit them and put them in Lightroom Mobile or whatever you want to do with them. 100, 100 megapixel RAW files, I think if you have to be careful if you transfer them to your phone. I would recommend more the, the SSD drive than the phone, but hey, it works if you want and you can operate the camera from your phone too. So if you want to do a tethered shot, uh, you know, if you're doing like landscape or you don't want to press the button so it doesn't, I mean, you can always use the timer in the camera, but some people like to use the app. Some people like to use um, other means to get to a very stable shot, but uh, it's there. You can do it. I think that wraps up the live stream for tonight. Again, if you have any questions, please ask them maybe down below or go on my website or the YouTube page in the comment section or in the community section. And uh, let's have a conversation around this camera. Very interesting proposal from Fuji. GFX 102. Um, I'll be releasing a full video, like I said. And this video has been brought to you. This is my plug. I'm not the, I don't usually do that, but just so you guys know, um, put the camera here. It's brought to you by my zine, which is called Humans After All. And this is number two of the series. And uh, yeah, this is basically showcasing some of my photography. If you are into street visual storytelling and travel, you can get it with the links down below or just go to fredranger.com. Everything is there. So thanks, William. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks, everybody who joined tonight. This will be a wrap. And again, I've been Fred Ranger, and I hope you enjoy life. Be happy and enjoy your very big, larger than full frame medium format camera. Cheers. <laughs>